Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to make a quick video for everybody since I was right in the middle of doing it and I figured, oh, this would be a great video. People have asked me this before. Um, I like to print models that don't fit on my printer. Usually I'll take a small one and I'll scale it up and I'll make it mumbo jumbo and then I cut it using the cut tool and I've learned a couple things throughout using this tool that I think uh, you guys could find useful or helpful to people who have never used it before. Uh, as always, don't forget to check the links down in the description for Etsy, Patreon, Discord, and whatever the hell else I throw down there. And then I uh, just want to say thank you to Caden O'Weiler and Everett Hope uh, for subbing me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the support. If you guys could do me a favor, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. We're on the way to 2,000 subs, and I'd love to hit it. Uh, and to show my appreciation, I plan to do a giveaway here in the near future, uh, probably about four or five models that I'll pick from my store to give away, but I'll scale them up a little bit because it's a little more fun that way. I like printing bigger things. And uh, just to say thank you to everybody. So I'm going to kick you guys over to my computer and get it screen recorded. I actually already recorded that part and uh, I kind of forgot to make an intro. So that's what this is. You're going to hear me mix up the word slice and cut. I don't know. I like the word slice more than the word cut. And I use slice to explain how I'm cutting something. And you'll hopefully it doesn't confuse you in the video. If it does, leave a comment down below and I can make a better one of these. But I figured I would just throw this up because it is a little confusing to use the tool. And there's some nuances to it that people should know about. So uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Peace. Thanks for watching. All right. So here we are in Bamboo Studio. This is a file that I picked from uh, Maker World. This already has everything preset. And if I go to preview here, I already sliced it. You can see what it's supposed to look like. I don't like doing this by uh, layer because when I scale this, it's going to screw everything up. So I'm gonna show you what to do to get rid of this first of all. Uh, one thing you do wanna do if you have a black model or the model is just whatever the base color is, like in prepare, you see it's black there. Uh, slice it and see if you have color changing effects like this one does. And then you're gonna to wanna to go through and delete these. Um, and this is the easiest way I have found to do this. And I'm just eliminating them right now. So that way there isn't anything specific. And then you can drag it through. And then we're gonna go back to prepare and then you can click preview again, it'll slice. And then you can see here it is completely black. All right, we're gonna go into prepare again. We're gonna change this to a different color just so it's easier to see on the screen. I'm not actually gonna print this per se cause I don't know what colors exactly the wife wants. Might even change that to like a green or a dungy orange or something just so it's easier to kind of track all right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna scale this to the size that you want. So up here, you can click the scale button and I'm just gonna make this some absurd number. Um, so these are I'm gonna go with a 250 millimeter build plate is what I'm gonna consider the size of this. And I'm gonna say times four, which would be a thousand. And it's obviously massive. Doesn't fit on the build plate, hard to swallow. That might be a little bit too big for this. So let's do 500 and see. It's not scaling universally for some reason. Oh, that's because that was thickness. <laughs> My bad. Let's do uh, 112. Let's just triple this roughly. Let's just say 500 millimeters. All right, so here, here we have one section of this. So obviously much too large to fit on the build plate. And this might even be a little bit hard to fit down, uh, but we're gonna try it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do after it's scaled to the size you want is you're going to want to cut the model. If you try to paint the model first, um, like this, if I draw some brown scribblies on this, and then we go over and click done here, and you can see now it's, it's painted on. If you try and cut this model, at least this is how it used to be. And you do make a single cut on the model. Let's just cut it here, it doesn't matter where. Um, it used to delete um, your, your painting. So it used to delete your painting and it looks like it still does. So just that's why you would um, want to paint it after you've cut it and we're just gonna uh, control Z that and undo it 
so yeah, make sure you paint your model after it's cut, um, otherwise you'll lose pretty much everything. So now what we want to do is go through and adjust this. So you can see the cut plane here is this square, this, this square, and you're going to want to set your rotation and everything straight up to zero and that should center it in your build volume and then if you want to make a horizontal cut you don't want to 90 that whoops z is the wrong one to do but we, that's still okay and then x and y is going to turn it the right so we want y because y is going to rotate it on that axis there so there we go now it's cut basically perfectly in half and then you want to change this from planar. If you're going to join this together, I recommend doing a dovetail cut. Uh, and then as you can see, that kind of messes up your cut. So you want to get this back to zero. But you can see the dovetail right now is trying to go there instead of on the model where you want it. So then you're going to want to go up and back to zero because you want to scale it. So, or you want to rotate it such that the cut is in the middle of this right here. One thing you have to do watch out for when you're doing this dovetail uh, is that you don't exceed your print volume size when you make the cut. So for instance, if this from the top of this dove to the bottom is above your uh, model's size, no, what am I saying here? If, if the top of this to the bottom of the model there is exceed your build volume, you're going to have to redo it or scale it down, and you don't want to have to do that. Um, in this instance, it will exceed my build volume. So what I want to do now is go, okay, that doesn't work. Reset this, go out, and scale it down a little bit, saying, okay, account for maybe 10 millimeters or so for that dovetail. You can adjust your dovetail, but um, it does get a little finicky, so let's just do 450 millimeters instead give us enough room to play with. And then we'll go back into cut. Now we're just gonna rotate on the X again, get it up and down. And from there, you should be relatively okay. I typically don't touch the dovetail all that much. Um, you can change your groove distance. So obviously you can go there, you can go there. I tend to stick around like a 10 or even maybe a 15. I don't like to get too much of an angle in there and then you can change your width. For this instance, I'm going to change it to 60 uh, just because it's a nice even number, easier to follow along and watch. And you're making your cut there. So then you can perform cut. You want to keep the orientation. And you want to cut that. Now, what you want to do, click off, you want to select the next one, and you want to do the same exact thing. You want to cut it because this one obviously can't fit in our build volume. And this time you still have to rotate along the X because you have to have your dovetail on the top. And then what we're going to do is change this to 10 and we're gonna go down to about a 40. And then we are gonna rotate it along the Y axis 90 degrees. And that didn't do what I thought it would do, isn't it? Because I need it to rotate this way. That's weird that when I typed it in, it didn't like it, and then I adjusted it myself, and it does like it. So you can see we're in the middle there, roughly. Um, and we'll perform that other cut. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. The only hard part is kind of, as you've seen me struggle with, uh, getting sure you orient your dovetails correctly. And let's see if it'll do it this time. No, it did not. So we will zero that out again. And that's a bug in Bamboo Studio. Hoping it would be fixed, but of course it's not. And you do want to get that to be a perfect 90. You do not want uh, anything messed up there. Apparently a rotating on the Z changes that, which is beyond weird to me. Um, yeah, there we are. Now we are at 90 and 90. We want to go down to 10 and 40. And then right there we will slice or perform that cut. What's it asking me? Did not want to fix the model. And there you have it. That is how you cut a model in Bamboo Studio. 
Uh, and of course, you're gonna have to rotate this orientation-wise however you see fit. Uh, but right here, you can also see, hey, look, it doesn't fit on the build plate, uh, especially if you're on like a P1S or something. So you're just gonna wanna rotate that such that um, it will fit. And just like that, we're good to go. Okay, so now that we're on the build plate and we have everything where we want it, uh, we are going to want to do, and this is really important if you're doing a model that has multi-layers, this isn't gonna apply to everybody, but uh, you're gonna wanna hold shift and you're gonna wanna click, oh, if she's control, and you're gonna wanna click uh, all four of these, you're gonna wanna merge them. And just for this quick little, um, wow, it's not letting me do that, huh? Darn, it used to let you merge no matter what. Guess we can fix the model. If you were able to merge it like you used to be able to, then you could paint it all at once afterwards and not have to go back and do it all. And that's what I was gonna attempt to do. So I'll be right back when this is finished repairing. Okay, so it's done repairing and I was going to hope I could merge these, but it won't let me. So that kind of sucks. Um, what does this do? No, that doesn't help. Well, let's start painting then. So uh, the easiest way to obviously paint something like this is to do <clears throat> is to do a height range model. So uh, we'll just choose orange first and then you'd want to go to the next height range. I'm going to increase height range for this specifically. All right. So we're going to want to get this a little larger. Kind of zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> and you can drag it all the way up to the top just so you know you don't have any missed spaces. So then once that happens, you can go to the next phase of this which would be the uh, part that comes now. So you can see right here's the part that I need to color differently. So basically everything above that needs to get painted this next color so it sticks out like that. And then we'll go to the next one and I think the next highest point would be this stuff right here. So you'd want this all the same color. And then at the same time, you'd also want to kind of come in here and see about trying to color these mountains a little bit because they are different. So that one looks to be the same height as these ones, but not the same height as the other ones. So let's see if we can just give it a nice little color change like that. And then you have that, and we could change this to a black or something, but that looks like the way it's supposed to be colored. Now the only bad part is you're going to have to go back and do that to all of them. Um, but in general, that's what you would do once the model's sliced, or it's not sliced, but uh, cut up, and then you're able to just slice that plate and print. And now, just repeat that process for the other pieces, and you'll have one giant piece at the end. Uh, I'm not going to show you guys what the finished product will look like just because that would take literally probably another day of printing. I mean, I could print it all at the same time, but I don't have enough colors to do it all at the same time. Uh, plus, my wife doesn't really want this model. She changed her mind on me, of course. So I'm just going to call it good there. But that is how you slice up a model in Bamboo Studio. And slice, of course, isn't the right word. That is how you cut a model in Bamboo Studio. Make sure when you do this that you cut it and you do not paint it first. If you, if you paint it first, uh, you will lose your painting. And that includes if you have a 3MF and you want to cut something on it, you will lose that 3MF painting. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So again, just to reiterate, you want to scale it first, 
Well, you want to rotate it to the point where you would have it. Then you want to scale it. Once it's scaled, then you want to cut. When you do cutting, make sure you click keep orientation. And that just helps if you're doing it like a flat model or you're doing a model that has a bunch of triangles so it doesn't get turned onto a weird axis axis. Because if you leave place on cut and you cut it, uh, it'll, it'll do weird things and it'll keep it at like the elevation, for instance, that you cut it at instead of just doing it in a normal way. Uh, so I recommend clicking that. After you cut it, then you can go in and paint it. And that's really all there is to it. And you slice, print, and you color good. And they usually fit together pretty well. And there's no problems. All right. And with that, I'm going to call this video done. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you found this helpful. If you want more Bamboo Studio tips, let me know down in the description or the comments, I guess, is where you'd go for that. Help me hit 2,000 subs. I think we're like 50 or 60 away. And uh, I thank everybody for watching. Now, get out there and go print shit.